Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. We're here in the circuit of Ricardo Tormo of Valencia and it's time for round 20, the final round of our career mode. So the goal is simple this weekend, you know what we're going to have to be trying to do and that is to get into qualifying 2 and qualifying the best possible position. But to be truly honest with you, if you haven't seen the last episode I'm about to spoil it, so be warned. We are only leading this championship by 24 points, so basically, unless we crash and Johan Zarco wins the race, we're going to be going home with a victory and a world championship in the Grand Prix class of MotoGP. Now, of course, I am super excited to get this race underway, but of course, that will be going ahead at 8pm tonight. It is going to be pretty simple. Just stay in the points. As long as we acquire just one single point, doesn't matter what happens from there on out, we have won the MotoGP World Championship. Now, Valencia is a track I very much enjoy, but going here last season in Moto2, I came here with a lot of confidence after securing the Moto2 World title, and yet, I still did really, really bad. So, I was a little bit concerned about getting the job done before Valencia, and now we kind of already got it done when you have uh, nine fingers on the trophy already, but that one thumb that's not quite on it yet means that we still have one more round to go, and 24-point championship advantage pretty much means that we've got the job done. However, you never know what's going to happen in the Grand Prix at 8pm tonight. But on this first lap already, looking pretty positive. However, my teammate Alicia Spargo at the top of the time sheet right now for the 130.056 has been dethroned now by Grant with a 129. 404. Now I'm probably not going to spend too long in the practice session, I'd rather get into qualifying and just move on up because already I feel rather confident and this bike has had another upgrade, now it's time for the uh, upgrade in the sense of the, the frame and the aerodynamics so the bike again is feeling that little step higher. Now I have decided to re-sign with Aprilia for next season because as mentioned in my last video I have never stayed with the same team twice in two seasons, so therefore I'm going to break the trend here now and I'm going to stay with Aprilia and see if we can get back-to-back -back championship results because I'm pretty confident that we're going to win the championship tonight at 8pm. The rest is just a formality to be quite honest with you and I'm super excited to get the job done. So the question I have then as well guys is do we rock the number one or do we stay with the number 47 for next season as we trail behind Paula Sparkrow right now on board the Repsol Honda? What would you guys prefer to see? Would you prefer the number one or would you prefer just the 47? Now I have done designs for the number one as well as the 47 and I've done a brand new helmet design in preparation for next season so maybe I'll share some pictures and some screenshots of them soon but for the time being we'll wait till the next season starts. I think I'm going to give it maybe a week or two on a bit of a break try some other sort of uh, content out and see what we enjoy doing but I know you guys really enjoy the MotoGP 21 series that I've done and uh, I want to continue it as well as just as much as you guys. They are tiring compared to the other ones because the commentary is rather uh, intense let's say but I very much enjoy doing the recording and the voiceovers but it's just very tiring of course. But, uh, so I'll probably give it a week or two and then we'll get straight back to it. We'll do the winter test on board the Aprilia and let's see how things are feeling and then we'll crack on with the next season but what a wonderful season it has been I've not really discussed much about this practice session it's going to churn out some laps and I just want to say thank you for everyone who has joined us this season in MotoGP 21 from Moto3 all the way up to the big category of MotoGP it's been three incredible seasons with a lot of support from you guys and I think you guys have really enjoyed it uh, the analytics certainly say that you guys have enjoyed it the likes certainly say that you've enjoyed it Maybe one or two people aren't a fan, but I'm pretty certain and confident that the majority of you guys very much enjoy these MotoGP 21 videos. So thank you to you guys, and I'll definitely keep them coming, don't you worry. But I do want to start doing some other different content as well on MotoGP 21, such as the Classic Championship. I would love to bring that back, because I had a thrilling time with Kevin Schwantz in MotoGP 20. Not quite sure who we're going to use for MotoGP 21, but you better believe we're going to do a Moto E season, a Classic Championship, and uh, some helmet cam gameplay on MotoGP 21 that, uh, yes, I have promised will be coming. I know you guys have requested it and I've yet to do it, so don't worry, we'll have that done. But uh, in the final lap now, we're probably not going to get into Q2 directly, but on this final lap, we'll get the job done, maybe go into Q1 and then jump into qualifying 2 after that, if we can make it. 
So the end of three practice, Jack Miller, Quattraro, Miguel Oliveira, your four fastest men with Jorge Martin in fifth place. Unfortunately, we didn't make the top ten, therefore means we are going into qualifying one to get the job done and hopefully move into qualifying two to battle it out for pole position. So a look at the names there, all three Aprilias, and of course, Johan Zarco, our championship antagonist for our particular championship charge, is here in this session as well. So moving on now to the actual qualifying session, I'm pretty confident we can get into qualifying two without too much hassle. I'm going to do some laps here and hopefully I'll have enough speed and momentum to get ourselves into the second qualifying session. So going into the left hand of the Mick Doohan corner for turn two, we do have Luca Marini ahead of us on track, of course on board the two-year-old Ducati. We very rarely get a toe in these practice sessions and of course the last couple of practice sessions we have been doing and qualifying sessions have been rather bugged so the rides have been crashing a lot and we've been gifted a couple of positions. I do think that has been absolutely crucial for the World Championship in itself but I'm pretty confident in believing that we could have got closer and closer to the World Championship as Johan Zarco and Peko Banyai have displayed that they have made way too many mistakes towards the end of this season. Now in real life of course Quattararo is leading the World Championship and I hope we get a similar thing to that next season where we get Joan Mir competitive, Fabio Quattararo and maybe even Maverick Vinales and Borda Yamaha in the game of course. I'm hoping we get a little bit of difference next season. The majority of the season it's just been sort of Johan Zarco and a little bit of Peko Banyaya. Early on in the season Jack Miller was quite dominant and all three Ducatis were just unbelievably good. But towards the end of the season Rossi actually became really good. Um, Vinales has got even better, of course Vinales and I battled it out in Buriram and of course Quattararo has improved as well so I'm really keen to see how this progression is going to work out next season because usually in MotoGP games you kind of fight the same people every single season but I'm curious to see what's going to happen in our second season. The Aprilia has gone on really, really strong. Even Alicia Spargo was on the podium this season in the video game in Phillip Island. So who knows what's going to happen. I really cannot wait to see what's going to happen tomorrow in next season. So of course, stay tuned. And if you are enjoying the series and you haven't subscribed yet, now is a wonderful time to do so because then you'll be prepared and ready for the next season in MotoGP 21. So in the end of the first sector, we're up by a tenth and a bit, already 1.7 seconds clear from Ika Lekolono, who won't be in MotoGP next season, which I think is an absolute crying shame, but we'll discuss that in another video. Keeping an eye on the left-hand side of the screen, Johan Zarco and Inea Bastianini, both very, very fast on their respectable Ducatis. Johan Zarco, the fastest man in the first sector, and Inea Bastianini with a two red sector times, and Luca Marini ahead of us, two orange sectors, so two personal best and as we're trailing Luca Marini, this is resulting in a bit of a boost for us. We're up there by two tenths going into the right-hander of turn 11. We'll get into the rear of the GP19 in a moment's time and hopefully we're going to be up and we are up once again two tenths of a second to the way of the world championship leader and soon to be MotoGP world champion. will be a three times world champion as Maverick Vinales goes to the top of the pile with a 128.590. So on the left-hand side of the screen we will go. Power setting three enable. Let's get try and get in behind Luca Marini and hopefully this will be enough to put us into the top two positions across the line we will go and it puts us top of the pile so back from the pits after fitting in a brand new soft and brand new rear tyre Maverick Vinales and Johan Zarco the two fastest men in this session right now looking like they were about to improve but Zarco couldn't get the job done and that also means that Johan Zarco is not too far away from us behind us so we'll have to pay attention to that hopefully he doesn't give him a, a little bit of a slipstream you can see him in the graphic in the bottom left hand corner of your screen there going into the McDoo and corner of turn two so the first section is finished and we're up by one and a half tenths of a second we could be shifting Johan Zarco out of the uh, ch chance of qualifying two which is going to be terrific this is how important these qualifying sessions are because of course that means that Johan Zarco have to start even further behind and that obviously makes a massive difference for the world championship and especially when it's a 24 point difference so going into the left hander now with one of the fastest parts going into a fifth yon very, very difficult corner to get right going into turn 8. And we've just dropped the front. <laughs> as if I jinx myself. And Johan Zarco's gone down as well. <laughs> oh, my God. But that is it for the end of the session. Maverick Vinales and Johan Zarco will be going into qualifying 2 to battle it out with 10 of the other best riders in the world for pole position. But, guys, upon the note, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And stay tuned at 8 p.m. to watch the Grand Prix unfold. So, upon that note, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you at 8 p.m. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description.
consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.